Bear. Mr. Minister, thanks for being here. Uh, thank you for having me. You know that there is skepticism around the world, here in Washington, all over, of the latest explanation about uh, the disappearance and then death of Jamal Khashoggi. I want to give you a chance to kind of lay out um, the latest explanation and how you came to this. We had a, uh, an individual who came to the consulate. He was approached by members of the Saudi security team. Uh, he, they told us that he left the consulate. They came back to Saudi Arabia, filed their report to that effect. Uh, the custodian of the Tuvali Mosque, King Salman bin Abdelaziz, dispatched a team to investigate in Turkey with the Turkish authorities. The reports we were getting from Turkey did not comport with the reports that the team had provided to us after they returned to Saudi Arabia. The uh, king then uh, directed the uh, public prosecutor to launch an investigation, which he did about nine days ago. He discovered that there were discrepancies. We discovered that uh, he was killed in the consulate. We don't know the, in terms of details how. We don't know where the body is. The public prosecutor then uh, uh, put out orders to detain 18 individuals for questioning and possibly facing trial. And the king also dismissed a number of senior officials in this area. This, Brett, is to be the first step of a long journey. Uh, we are determined to uncover every stone. We are determined to find out all the facts and we are determined to punish those who are responsible for this for this murder and we are determined to ensure that the institution that we have that deals with with uh, intelligence has checks and balances in it and to ensure that something like this can never happen again you said you don't know where the body is someone obviously knows was it chopped up was it dismembered do you know that working on this. We're working on this with our Turkish colleagues. Uh, the public prosecutor is continuing his line of questioning and we are intent on determining what happened and we're intent on uncovering all of the facts that exist in this case. We want to make sure that uh, we know what happened and we want to make sure that those responsible be held to account. Why did it take 18 days for the Saudi story to kind of gel? You know, at first it was that he walked out of the consulate and then it was silence for a while, and then this detailed explanation minus you know, where the body is and uh, who ordered it. Uh, reports that indicated that he left the consulate and then as I mentioned our investigating team in Turkey discovered that there are elements that will contradict what was in the report when we ascertained ourselves of this fact then the public prosecutor launched his investigation and he determined that the reports that was originally filed were wrong and that there, there was something that happened that was criminal and as a consequence we took the steps we took but keep in mind when you have a situation like this you want the information that you put out to be as accurate as you possibly Possibly can. You don't want to put out speculation or hearsay or gossip. And these things take time. You may want to look back at the issue of Abu Ghraib and the timeline between when the incidents were discovered and when the U.S. government came out with an initial report of what happened. These things take time and you want to be careful. You're an authoritarian government. Um, you're saying that the crown prince, Mohammed bin Salman, did not know about this? at all, even though there are members of this 15-person team that are closely aligned with him? Well, Brett, uh, first of all, we're not an authoritarian government. We're a monarchy. We have our checks and balances. We have our systems. The individuals uh, who did this did this outside the scope of their authority. There obviously was a tremendous mistake made, and what compounded the mistake was the attempt to try to cover up. That is unacceptable in any government. These things, unfortunately, happen. We want to make sure that those who are responsible are punished, and we want to make sure that we have procedures in place that prevent it from happening again. Our and history as Saudi Arabia for the past 18 years, 80 plus years since the founding of the modern Saudi state, we have never engaged in such behavior and we will never engage in such behavior. This is an aberration, this is a mistake, this is a criminal act and those responsible for it will be punished. To the original question, did the Crown Prince know anything about it if there were people closely tied to him involved in this operation? 
There weren't people closely tied to him who were involved in this operation. There were pictures of some security officers who may have been part of his security detail from time to time, but this is normal. Security People who deal in security details rotate among different officials, both domestic and foreign. So having somebody in a picture does not imply that they're close to at all. The Crown Prince has denied this. The Crown Prince is not aware of this. Even the senior leadership of our intelligence service was not aware of this. This was an operation that was a rogue operation. This was an operation where individuals uh, ended up exceeding the authorities and responsibilities they had. They made the mistake when they killed Jamal Khashoggi in the consulate, and they tried to cover up for it. Yeah. What do you say, do you believe that the Turks have audio of what happened in that consulate? I don't know. They have said they have audio, but we haven't heard it, and I don't know any other government that has access to those audio tapes. Do you believe that the U.S. intelligence community has some kind of intercepts that suggest a high-level understanding of this operation? I don't know, and I would imagine that if they had, they would have told us about it. And so I, I see a lot of uh, speculation in the press. I see a lot of uh, hearsay, and I see a lot of gossip. And I just caution people to be cautious, let the investigation in Turkey and in Saudi Arabia unfold. And when the results come out, we will know the truth. So, Mr. Minister, you understand the skepticism um, that this was somehow a fight that develops inside the consulate, and that a 60-year-old columnist, writer, is going to resist a 15-member security team, and that one of the members of the team was an autopsy specialist. Uh, how do you explain all of that? Well, uh, Brett, I don't believe all 15 members were in the consulate when this happened. Uh, we are looking at uh, every individual member of the team. We are trying to find out what, how they were assembled, how they were dispatched, and we're trying to ascertain the facts as to what happened in the consulate and what, hap and what happened subsequent to that. We have said when we put out the initial results that this, these are initial results. They're not conclusive. The investigation is still in its early phases, and we're determined to pursue uh, this to the end in order to uncover the truth and make sure that everybody knows what happened and we have the full picture and we know who's responsible and we hold them accountable. I'm sure you've heard uh, lawmakers speaking out. Here's what Senator Rand Paul said today on Fox News Sunday. I feel certain that the Crown Prince was involved and that he directed this, and that's why I think we cannot continue to have relations with him. And so I think he's going to have to be replaced, frankly, but I think that sanctions don't go far enough. There are a lot of Washington lawmakers who are in that same boat. How do you respond to them? I find it uh, very surprising that somebody 6,000 miles away can be certain about an event that happened 6,000 miles away with no access to information or intelligence. So this is a judgment call on the part of Senator uh, Paul. This is not based in fact. It's just based on emotions and based on speculation. With regards to deciding who, uh, who, dis who leads our country, this is a matter for Saudi Arabia to decide and nobody else. And I would respectfully urge members of Congress to wait until they have the facts and then judge the results of the facts and take positions then but not jump to conclusions before something is concluded. There is the presumption of innocence until proven guilty. In this case, people have turned it upside down, unfortunately. Are you worried, fearful, about something in this investigation showing you something that is different than the original story that you've put out now? put out the version that we had based on the facts we had at the time. We will continue to put out information as it becomes available and as it, as it, and as it, as it is certified. We have been very clear that we will leave no stone unturned and that we will hold those accountable for these actions irrespective of where they are. And definitively, King Salman is standing behind the Crown Prince on all of this. The custodian of the Tuholi Mosque, King Salman, is uh, determined to see this investigation through, determined to ascertain the facts, determined to hold those responsible accountable, and determined to put in place policies and procedures and measures in the security services to prevent something like this from ever happening again. What will happen to the people who have been arrested surrounding this? This is uh, up to the courts to decide. The public prosecutor will uh, bring charges as the investigation unfolds. They will be referred to the courts, and the courts will sentence them. Do you have a message to the Khashoggi family today? 
yes, this is a terrible mistake. This is a terrible tragedy. Our condolences go to, out to them. We feel their pain, and I wish this, this didn't, ha didn't happen, and I wish that uh, this could have been avoided. Unfortunately, a, a huge and grave mistake was made, and I assure them that those responsible will be held accountable for this. Last thing, Mr. Minister, you spent a lot of time as the uh, ambassador to the U.S., now as foreign minister. How concerned are you about the future of the U.S.-Saudi relationship after all this? Saudi relationship is a historic and strategic one. We have great interests uh, that we share together. Uh, we have a great trade relationship. We have security issues that are critically important to both of us. We work very closely on combating terrorism and extremism, on containing Iran's uh, aggressive policies in the region, on trying to bring peace to the Red Sea and the Horn of Africa, on trying to bring peace to Afghanistan and Pakistan. The relationship is a hugely important strategic relationship for both countries. I believe that uh, when the investigation is over and the facts are revealed and people know who was responsible and see those individuals being punished and see procedures put in place to prevent this from happening, that the relationship will weather this. Saudi Arabia's Foreign Minister Adel al -Jubair. Mr. Minister, thank you for the time. Thank you.